Today we're going to look at 3D layouts for AutoCAD 2012 and 2013. To do this, we're going to import 3D geometry into uh, the AutoCAD model space, and then we're going to use that geometry to, to very quickly create views, um, both orthographic views um, and other drawing views, um, and we'll also be able to add some dimensions and other annotations. Um, finally, we're going to look at tools like FlatShot, um, which will let you quickly condense 3D geometry into a 2D view. The first step for this is going to be to download um, CAD geometry from any of the retail websites that, that provide these. Um, a good example is going to be something like McMaster, which, uh, McMaster Car, sorry, which provides you often 2D and 3D CAD models of parts that you, you can purchase. So in this case, we have a, a steel flange um, for butt welding onto a pipe. Um, and you can see they provide us this basic drawing and also a list of possible download links, um, including formats like SolidWorks and Step, as well as the 2D formats. So what we're going to do today is just download the 3D version um, and then open that in AutoCAD to create views like this ourselves. All right, so in our AutoCAD window, we're going to flip to the Insert ribbon and click Import to uh, import our SOLIDWORKS format geometry. So we click Open, um, and it'll take a little bit. It's going to import this in the background, um, and it'll pop up a little notice to us when that's ready. We can see that the import's been completed here. Um, so now we can click on that notification to drop this 3D model directly in our drawing. Now that we have this model, we're going to flip to a layout view. Um, we can either use one of the existing ones or create a new one. Um, so once we've gotten rid of the old view, we can switch to layout ribbon and then start placing our views based on that important imported component. So we're going to start with base and then click model space. Um, so that will pull the model out of our model space and we could also, if we had inventor, use that as well. Um, so for now, I'm just going to create a very uh, simple setup here. Um, we want to choose orientation and select the view that makes the most sense um, for this view. So for now, the, the front view makes sense um, as a primary view of this flange. Um, so we can click front and then exit. And then it prompts us to create projected views. So here we can very easily project a view upwards to get a uh, what would effectively be a top view. We can also get a pictorial view and a side view. Finally, when we're done, we hit enter to accept. If you would escape, it'll clear the whole thing. So now that we've completed these import steps here, um, our, next, our next step is going to be to create other kinds of views, such as section views or aligned views. Um, so these are almost as easy to create as uh, those base views that we just made. Um, and we can see there's other buttons in our Create View tab that, that let you do that. So projected views are what we just did. Um, and the next step is going to be to make a section view that better shows us um, what's going on inside this part. So in this case, for example, we have um, this, this view, there's a lot of hidden lines, and it's not really clear what the internals look like. So to create this section view, I'm just going to quickly delete this view. Um, and then click uh, the simple full section view. We're going to start from this parent view. Um, and then at this point, we're just going to create um, uh, the, the section line directly that we want to use. So um, I'm going to start by snapping to the center, um, and then to the other center, let enter to complete. Um, and at this point, once we've drawn the section line, I can directly place the section view. It lets us control things like the depth of the section view, um, annotations, that kind of stuff. Uh, at this point, it should be enough to just hit exit. Um, and you can see we get this label that we can move to wherever is convenient. And we get this section view. Now, um, this is, of course, showing us exactly what we wanted. Um, we're getting the slice just from each of these points. Now, if I want to make this a full section view right up the middle, I can stretch this out um, 
so that we get a, uh, a straight extension off each side. I'm just going to turn polar tracking on um, to make that work a little bit better. Um, and so at this point, we have the full section view um, as shown here. Okay, so at this point we're going to uh, actually delete this side view because it doesn't give us much. Um, and I'm going to quickly reposition this pictorial view off to the side to try and maximize the amount of room we have to... Um, uh, and that, that'll basically let us adjust um, where these views are to give us the most drawing room. And we can see that again I can kind of freely place these views. Um, it's very powerful. Um, and so at this point, we can start adding some simple annotations to um, the, each of these views. Now, the good news is basic dimensions, um, and by basic, I don't mean literal basic as in um, GD and T, but just you know, your, your simple dimensions such as um, your linear dimensions uh, or um, diameter or radius, uh, you can directly apply. Um, and the good news is, if I move these around, these dimensions are associative. Um, and so, or at least that's the 3D CAD terminology. And what this means is basically they are uh, anchored to these features and, and will size and move with the views. So we can very quickly add all the appropriate annotations that we need to, to show um, this, the overall size of this part. Um, um, being somewhat sloppy here, but we can we can easily kind of clean this up a little bit later, um, and so we get a lot of illustrative power very quickly. Um, one thing I want to caution you about, though, is that basic drawing objects, like say I want to draw a line in here to be a center line, um, so it doesn't come with uh, center line definition in the layers by default, but let's say I just drew something that will we'll pretend is a center line for now, um, and then I go to move my view. Um, say I move it down, we can see it leaves the center line behind. Um, so regular 2D objects sketched into this area are not associative. So that means that when you're doing your annotations, um, it's going to be basically very easy to disrupt any of those center marks. This, the same, for example, is true for, sorry, for center marks. If I add um, using dim center center marks on these holes, and then I decide to move this view, um, those are not associated. Now, this is not um, necessarily a problem, um, but because your work habits um, with something like this will tend to to take advantage of the fact that you can move and resize things, it, it will make it, in the long run, very difficult to have a mix of associative and not associative features. Um, so you just want to, if you're going to be drawing these non-associative center lines and dimension marks, you want to make sure to keep that in mind, um, that you have to be very careful when you're moving and resizing. All right, at this point, the, the final thing I'd like to cover um, is using the flat shot command to create quick views of a 3D object. So we'll see what this looks like. If we type flat shot, um, what this is basically asking us to do is insert a flattened uh, 2D view of an object in the current orientation. Um, so here I'm going to choose export as new block, but I can easily you know, export this as a drawing. Um, and so I have a couple of choices to make here. Uh, for my foreground lines, um, this so I can specify to keep the color as by block um, and our standard continuous line type. For obscured or what would effectively be hidden lines, however, um, I have a choice. I can either hide them which we're going to want to do for the isometric pictorial view, or I can show them and specify them in a different color and line type. So first, let's just hide those, um, and then I'm also going to check include tangential edges, uh, which we're going to need since a lot of these features have rounded over edges, and we want them to show up in our isometric drawings. 
So with these settings, I'm going to click Create. And then uh, we can see already that we have a, a pretty nice looking view. Um, so I'm just going to place this somewhere. Use all the default settings for X scale, Y scale, and rotation. Um, and then I'm going to flip to top view and then orient myself here. And so what you can basically see is that this is a perfect isometric view as you would have drawn um, if you have to do a pictorial view. So now I can quickly verify that this is isometric by adding in some simple sketch geometry. So here, let's throw in some construction lines from this to the midpoint. Um, we can do a uh, connect array from one of the holes to its partner hole. And now um, if we look at the dimensions here, Let's see, we want to check the spacing between these two. Um, right, we'll quickly add this in. We'll, yeah, so this, unfortunately, our uh, rays are not the best tool for this. So let's quickly just draw objects like this, and then we'll finally connect these with. We can see that we have this nice 60 degree angle that you would expect from an isometric drawing. Same thing here. Um, finally. Uh, we can throw in some other annotations. So we have this 30 degree between the horizontal. We have 60 degrees on each side. And of course, this line is vertical. So basically, just like that, we get a perfect isometric projection, um, flat view as a block um, in essentially two or three clicks. Now, we can use this same method to uh, produce a similar view. Let's say we want to do orthographic views. Um, so in this case I'm going to add obscure lines and choose my uh, hidden line style and maybe to uh, we will want to do this by layer um, and then also we're going to want to color the uh, foregrounds by layer here. So we'll create that um, and then specify the default scaling and rotations. And now once again, we have, again, this, you know, for essentially no cost, we've got this nice flat orthographic view of our part. Um, and so at this point, if you wanted to mess with this, uh, you can go into the block editor, which is in the insert ribbon. Um, and so this guy here lets you uh, mess with the drawing at a finer level. We can see, for example, um, you can control which layer you want to put these lines on, um, things like that. So anyway, you can also, at this point, you can save these as drawing views. You can save them as separate drawing files. Um, and so very quickly put this single piece of 3D geometry to use.